Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Right, we're starting a new series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. On the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, this audio won't be as, as good as it should be because we're not using the headset or anything else. But... Um, Brother Bill couldn't make it tonight. He's uh, he is at home getting the victory. Amen. 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 And, uh, he called and talked with him today and spoke victory over him. Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, but he, he had the camera at the house, so yeah. couldn't get here. And, and uh, so we'll um, <clears throat> and you know and that one of the other transitional things once we kind of get up the the backdrop and all that stuff, then then we're going to get the television portable equipment. That we need to we need a rack, we need the little monitors, and there's some things we need to have to do television okay. and get our regular television cameras back in. Right. Yeah. Okay, and we do want to get that because we go yeah. go back to a two camera setup, nitro cameras, etc. All right. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual, now if you got if you got a King James, and maybe you have some other translations, the word gifts is italicized. Mm -hmm. Meaning it was not there in the Greek. The translators added it for the purpose of helping bring clarity or smoothness to the reading. But the, the, the word there really is spiritual in the plural in the Greek. It's spirituals. And better meaning is things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Now concerning things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Right. So this chapter is about things that pertain to the Holy Ghost. All right. All right? We, you know, and like a Shambach says, I, I know about that Holy Spirit, but there's something about that Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know that Holy Ghost, and, and the priest better. Holy, Holy Ghost, priest better. All right. Now concerning things of things of and concerning the Spirit, uh, we, brethren, I would not have you what ignorant, unlearned, not knowing about it. The Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth. Now these were the tongue talkingness, prophesying this bunch of folks you ever want to meet. I mean, they just you know Paul had to write to them and say, now look, guys. I mean, you know. <laughs> How is it every come together? Everyone's got a tongue. Everyone's got an interpretation. Everyone's got a vision. Everyone's got something going on. You know, I mean, they were just, they were tongue talking. They believe, you know, thank God that they, they, they were given to the, the Holy Spirit. But you know, he had to bring some correction and some straightening out and get everything kind of back in order so that what God had given as a, as a blessing uh, would be a blessing and not confusion. Okay? Amen. Uh, you know that you were Gentiles and carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I speak unto you, uh, to you understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. You can't stand and prophesy and say, Jesus is not the Son of God. That's not the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, but I got the Spirit. Now you don't. You've got a Spirit, but it ain't the Spirit. Right, right. It's one of them ungodly spirits. It's one of them devils. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. But no man speaks by the Spirit of God causes Jesus a curse. No man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you're in the Spirit, you will confess the Lordship of Jesus. Now remember, Jesus said this. He said, if I be lifted up from there, thou draw all men unto me. Yes. See, when the Spirit of God is in manifestation, he'll lift up Jesus. Amen. Not a man. All right. Amen. Come on now. Amen. See, he said, oh, are you a man, man to do something? Oh, we got to give him money for money him, for money him. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Was Jesus lifted up or was the man lifted up? Because, see, people will use false and lying wonders and gain money. What happens, why, why is Satan after the money? Because if he takes the money out of the church for illegitimate use, he doesn't go into the kingdom for proper use. So he'll magnify a man and he'll lift up a man and cause money to be funneled into a man that's not magnifying Jesus to keep it out of the church that is magnifying Jesus. Okay? So if, it's, if it, the Holy Ghost is in manifestation, Jesus gets lifted up. And I can tell you, you can tell somebody's operating under the anointing of the Holy Ghost if they keep magnifying Jesus and don't draw the attention to themselves. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to give you an example. Now, we're just going to meddle on while I'm teaching all this. All right. Okay? I believe in meddling. Okay. All right? I believe in getting right in your stuff. I can get up in your grill, spiritually speaking. Mm -hmm. Right in the bus grill. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> when people do things like this, and, and we'll tell you, I'll tell you ahead of time what your response is, run. 
when you're in a service and somebody, there's a miracle or a sign or a wonder of some type, and that person stops and goes, this is a great time to take up an offering. Get up and leave. Wow. Okay. And it happens all the time. Okay. Why? Because they're using that to fund to raise money. Right. It's a great time to take up an offering. Because these people are all emotional. Yeah. People are all excited. And they take advantage of that. And it's not the Holy Ghost. It's bringing it to them. And everybody's like, oh, they just start throwing money. Mm -hmm. You know, because something happened. Well, you know, there are lying signs and wonders too. Yes, okay. that's true. Okay? So we have, to, we have to be guarded about that. We have to be guarded against those things. You, to be, you know, you have to be, you know, you're, you're right. If you've been around at all, you've got enough sense or enough spiritual insight to know when something's of God or not. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember a number of years ago, uh, there, was a, there was a young preacher, about 23. He was going all over the country. And I mean, a lot of big ministries had him in their churches. And he came to the church that I was in. I wasn't there then, but I got to see some of the tapes, some of his videos and stuff of it. And, and something about just his name didn't sit right in my heart. Hmm. Just, just, just an itch. Brother Amy just says, "God, just something just a scratch of me down in there." <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! And just something won't right, and you just kind of, but everybody, oh, so you just kind of sit there and shut up because everybody thinks they're great. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. He's going around taking up, I mean, huge offerings because he, he just had this this personality that was whatever. And he would, he would. Preacher in a way that just you know people just loved it and they thought it was great. Supposedly went to heaven and all this kind of stuff. Hmm. I'll come to find out well, that many years later they come out he was a homosexual oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nobody wanted to believe it. I, I have a personal friend who was who worked with him for a season and he, he made a pass at it. Oh, well then it came out a few years later he had stopped traveling as much as pastor in church. He had to step down because he had an ongoing relationship with a man in the church. Oh, my. Hmm. Oh, my. Now see. See if you're spiritual. If you're if you're if you listen to your spirit, yeah. the Holy Ghost, He may not tell off everything to you, but He'll let you know to stay away from that. Right. Uh -huh. And I bet I don't know how many people or how many ministries over the years that everybody just clamored about and went nuts over that something on the inside just kind of ate to me, uh -huh. and I stayed away from it. And they come find out later something's really wrong there. Okay. And everybody's just throwing money at it, everybody, and what you can't get the money back. Amen. It's already been misused. It's already been put in the wrong place. There's no harvest coming on that. Yeah. It was just it was it's wasted for the kingdom. Okay? And everybody's got their tape series and got their books and got all this. And then what happens Christians fall out and lose a walk with God because they, they get disappointed and hurt. Right. Get their eyes on the man. Yeah, get their eyes on the man. They do. And so Paul wants us to keep our eyes on the Lord. And the, the right spirit lifts up Jesus. Amen. Okay? Doesn't lift up the man, lifts up Jesus. Amen. Now, men are going to lift up men. That, that happens. But the man is not lifting up himself. Uh -huh. Okay? okay? They're lifting up the Lord. Uh -huh. All right? Hallelujah. Um, now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which works all in all. There are different views on what this all means. Uh, some believe that, you know, that there are, um, you know, that the differences of administration are that there's, you know, God may manifest himself differently with the same gift through different people, but a different way. Okay, same manifestation of the spirit, but manifest differently through different people. Other believe that there's actually, there's different, there are different types of administrations in the body of Christ. Um, I'm not going to argue with either way. Okay? You could probably either one, but both, or both could be accurate. All right? But there are differences of gifts. It's the same spirit behind it. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. Now, let me say something. There's something consistent here in these three things. God's behind it. I said God is behind it. Okay? Now, the word gifts would be better translated or better interpreted manifestations. Because when we hear the word gifts, we kind of get the idea that I showed it one day and the Lord gave me the gift mm -hmm. of prophecy. Mm -hmm. And so you are around prophesying anytime you want to. Anywhere you want to. However you want to. <laughs> okay? You just can't prophesy anytime you want to. Alright. Let's go on read here. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. When the Spirit manifests, it is to profit everybody. It is not for your personal profit. Mm -hmm. And we're, not, we're talking about P-R-O-F-I-T. Gain. It's not so you can gain personally. It is to bless others. 
God uses vessels to bless the whole, not so you can build your own kingdom. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, for two, if, for, for by one is given, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge. That's not wisdom or knowledge, it's the word. You don't get just all wisdom given to you. Right. You don't get all knowledge given to you. Right. Okay. To another, uh, see, about the same Spirit, to another, faith, that or the Amplified Bible says special faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing. And, and then the Lord later on in, in the chapter says gifts of healings. And so we know that there are multiple different gifts of healing. You might be, you know, God may use you along the line of cancer. Somebody else may be uh, deaf. Somebody else may be blind. Uh, William Branham, they could line deaf and blind people up in front of him. He'd go that line. Nine out of ten were instantly healed. Wow. That's how God, now, Brother Hagin was cancer. It was particularly growths. Mm -hmm. Tumor growths. Instant. I mean, it's just particularly uh, uh, high percentage of people were instantly healed. I mean, his ministry and along those lines. Okay? Hallelujah. So there's gifts of healings. Praise the Lord. Uh, to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discerning of spirits. To another, uh, King James put divers, the kinds of tongues. You know, whether, whether I speak the tongues of men or angels. And you see, you can speak in the language of the people you're around and you not know what you're saying. I've had that happen. I'll never forget, I was in the Czech Republic. And on my, this is a, my first mission trip in Europe. I went to, um, no, my second, this is my second, because I went to England and I went to uh, Prague, Czech Republic. And, uh, and during the week, we were having a service, and I got to, I got to speaking out in tongues. And after the, after that morning lesson was over, one of the people came up to the overseer of the Bible school and started talking to him. Said he was he was speaking in Czech, and he was saying this. Started say, telling him what I said. I was speaking in I was speaking in Czech. So Czech I was speaking in Czech. Czechoslovakia was in Slovakia and Czech Republic put together. So I was speaking the Czech language. And what I was saying was, the glory is coming. I see it on the horizon. It's not far off. It's coming. Mm. That's, they heard me speak in Czech. I had no clue what I was saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm speaking in kinds of tongues. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm just praying out the Holy Ghost. I just think I'm speaking out in tongues. I know I'm speaking in tongues. I ain't got a clue what I'm saying. But they knew what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. I've had that happen all the time. I've, I've been speaking French before. People understood what I was saying. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it was because I know, I know enough French. Listen, I know enough French to know it was French, and that's all I knew. <laughs> I can say hello, goodbye, and I want to order this. <laughs> Jambon avec fromage and mayonnaise. Okay, I want a ham and cheese, I want a ham and cheese sandwich with mayonnaise on it. Okay? Okay. And, you know, hey, next act, uh, you want a hot dog? Uh, dog. All right. <laughs> Not kidding. I'm French fries. Uh, pommes frites. En français. Pommes frites. Okay. Um, so, you know, diverse kinds are kinds of tongues, okay? And to another, the interpretation of tongues, not the translation, the interpretation. That's why if somebody speaks in tongues and somebody interprets, it could be short or longer than what they said. Because right. it's, it's not the translation, but the interpretation of what's being said. Now, you know that there's different languages. I mean, somebody can get up speaking German. And somebody said, he said hello. Because <laughs> German is just really wordy and long, and you know and the words are really long. <laughs> Hello, yeah. and they don't know the V from a W. <laughs> Hallelujah! I'm just I'm, to my friends from Deutschland. I love you. Hallelujah! Uh, all these worketh that one and self same Spirit. Hallelujah. Divine unto every man severally as he will. Let's stop here for a few minutes. And we may not get much past this tonight. We can, we, we, if we're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we want to lay the right foundation. Now, uh, one of the things that Dad Hagen said, I was, I was uh, reading back in his book, the, the, uh, the Holy Spirit and His Gifts, just kind of looking over some stuff in there. Um, you never know it all. It's always good, good to go back yeah. and get yeah. stuff, especially for those who are your spiritual mentors. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, they don't get old and die and go away and what they had to say was no, of no value. No. Right. Paul, Paul's still speaking to us every day. Peter's still Amen. speaking to us yes. every day. Yes. John's still speaking to us every day. Because mm -hmm. uh, what they said was under the unction. Yeah. Okay. Amen? Yeah. See, see, the eternal things are forever. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let me give you an example. A number of years ago in, in a little town called Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. a man on the farmland out there. And out in that farmland, there was a little knoll. 
when I, and then you got to understand, and, and of course, Jeff, you know that you've been out there. A knoll is pretty much two ant hills on top of each other. Okay, so it's a bump. bump. All right, I, I'm being a little facetious, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's just not like out here. Uh, what they call mountains, we we call you know uh, groundhog uh, bumps or something. But they, this this old farmer will go out there every day and pray. Oh God, use this land for your glory. Let the nations be reached from this. This is back in the 20s and 30s. He'd be praying this. He died. But see, spiritual things are eternal. They're, yeah. they're not. Yeah. They, they don't cease just because a man's living or not. Right. The word of the Lord endureth forever. Yeah. That which yeah. is prayed or spoken or declared under the unction. Yeah. Yeah, there's key. Under the unction yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's eternal. Yeah. And. Um, so come along 1970-something, about 1975, right, uh, Kenneth Hagin Ministries uh, started running a Bible training center after Brother Hagin was in camp meeting and got and told everybody that next year they were going to start a Bible school. So a year later, they started running a Bible training center in, in what was the old Sheridan Road Assembly of God. That church became what Billy Joe Dorothy pastored, Sheridan Road, Sheridan Assembly, or actually became Sheridan Assembly. And then they moved out of Sheridan, out of there and moved over to the Navy Center. Okay? But that was Billy, that's where Billy Joe came and, and that church took off. But Brother Hagin started, they were holding camp meeting there. That old sermon, El Shaddai came out of that, that camp meeting held in that building. Uh, I've, been, I've been in that building. You know, there's, there's some anointing in there, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And um, so he started Rainbow Bible Training Center. Well, they started the Sheridan Assembly for the first uh, year and a half, or two years. And then they realized they were growing too fast. You know, they went from 158 the first year to 178 the second. By the time I went in 1980, this is 1975, they started. By the time I went in 1980, there were 2,000 students there. Right. In five years, they went from 58 to 2,000. Right. I'm telling you, there's a lot of folks showing up all of a sudden. Well, they realized that that first couple years, they got to have done place. So they went over, they were riding around and really <coughs> the road there. They went over to this, this, they turned on to what is now the Raymond Bible Training Center campus. And as soon as they drove on it, Brother Hayes said, this is it, this is it. There was an office building, and right behind it was a warehouse. Now, if you've ever been there, that's all that was there. Oh. Next door to it was a skating rink. Okay, and then there was a pond out there that the geese attack you out of. Mm -hmm. Them white geese just come <laughs> at you. I mean, they're like you know we got devils in them. I'm not sure why they hadn't cast them out. Anyway, and then again, that thing's vicious. <laughs> and um, and so they started. They moved around about trying to send out. They took the warehouse, converted it into um, the, the auditorium, and then they used the classrooms in the, uh, that bits, that office building over there. And uh, and they kept. Building and going. By the time I got there in '80, you know, three or four years later, they built a student development center one, and student development center, student, student developmental center two, and I had known prayer and healing school. I mean, and all they've done since they got there was build, buy, and add on. Okay. Well, about some coming on like late '80s, they realized that they go, you know, uh, God speaks to pastor. And by then, they bought the skating. They actually bought the skating rink uh, the second half of the year I was there. So the winter of 1980-81, they bought the skating rink. And a couple years later, they built onto the side of that a gymnasium, which also began to double as Rainbow Bible Church. God spoke to Pastor Hagen and said, you think I'm not, I forgot what I'm doing? I'm talking about things being prayed out in the Holy Ghost. You said what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And so they added on that gymnasium, and then the church started taking off. And so then they, they started using that gymnasium and setting up a platform on Sundays. And they could see 3,300 people in there. Oh. So Winter Bible Seminar, I mean, we're filling up Winter Bible Seminar. Every, I mean, people standing in line. They, they, they finally had to tear out between the skating rink and the gym and put fire doors in so they could roll them up and set another 1,000 seats over on the skating rink so you could kind of look through the cracks and see the service going on so they could get about 4,300 people in there. Wow. Well, they realized this thing's just a going and a blowing. And God spoke to them about building the church. So they went over there, one acre footprint. Rainbow Bible Church is an acre footprint. That means the ground, the building takes up is an acre. Got upstairs and now you got to know, but the footprint of the building is an acre. All right? And they do it. Well, they got to doing some research. Billy Brim, one of the people, got doing some research and found out that that little knoll that man used to pray on sits right under where the church is. About 70 years later. Hallelujah. And they're reaching, we're reaching nations. Hallelujah. We have over a, over 180 Bible schools around the world now. Hallelujah. We've got about 11,000 students in a Bible school every month of a Rainbow Bible Training Center International and America combined. Yeah. I mean, they're just, 
And from that place, the nations are being touched. But a man prayed decades, decades, decades before that building was ever, before the first state was put in the ground. Mm -hmm. That God would use that land for the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So things of the spirit, they're not like things of the flesh. Amen. And you just can't make up stuff and say stuff. There's a, there, there is something called the unction right. mm -hmm. that comes. Mm -hmm. now, I, now, now, so I've said all that to tell you this. Spiritual things are eternal things. Yes. But they also require unction. That's why we have to pray and get into the spirit. Uh -huh. okay. So we can start out praying, you know, just what we, we, yes. we want to say or whatever. Yes. But you got to leave that place and get into the spirit. Amen. You can be in the spirit in, the, in your natural language. Sometimes you got to pray in the Spirit in tongues just to get into the Spirit so you can pray out yes. things in your natural language. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brother Roberts talked about, you know, he would interpret his prayers. He'd pray yes. in tongues for a period of time and then interpret it. Mm -hmm. yes. His own prayers. God taught him how to interpret his own prayers. Yeah. So spiritual things are eternal things. Yeah. Now, what's, what am I trying to say? Dad Hagen said this. He said, in the sense the Spirit divides severally as he wills, yeah. the manifestation of the Spirit is by the Spirit. Notice the manifestation of the Spirit, not the person. Mm -hmm. Our will comes involved in being yielded. Yeah. Our will comes involved in being available. Yeah. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Doesn't mean you can turn it on and off. It means that you put, you're willing and you're available when he moves. Yes. Yeah. Now I, I I know back when I was first uh, first got saved. Now I grew up Pentecostal holiness. Now, I won't say all those years, but I, I grew up Pentecostal holiness. I had the old saints come up, put the hands on you, and pray heaven down on you. I mean, you know, your hand prints are left in the pews or the altar because you're trying not to get saved, and they're praying, God, you this young man. Oh, here comes heaven all over you. You think you're going to die if we get out of the building and go to hell. So you're, Lord, forgive me for right now, you know. I mean, you got, and you got old, I mean, old saints. I mean, I, I know I had people praying over me who were out of early Pentecost mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Yeah, they were out of, I mean, they, were, they came out of the Pentecost to move back in the 20s and 30s. Wow. Okay, so they, they had all that on them. Wow. Yes. I mean, even as a kid who wasn't saved, I knew, I, I, I sensed and knew the Holy Ghost. Amen. So when it came to, when I got born again and got, got filled with the Spirit, it did take a whole lot. Right. Because I've been around, I, you know, I've been around him. I've been in his presence, mm -hmm. but I hadn't allowed him in. Oh, right. But when I, when, I, when I got to that point, it was just easy. Okay, well, I know who you are. <laughs> I've been to the altar before. You've been there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I give it all to you, Holy Ghost. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. And so, you know, uh, growing up in that atmosphere and knowing that, you know, but I remember when I first got, when I first got saved and came over, came over into the, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, there was a group in our Pentecostal church that would have a cottage prayer meeting every Saturday night. And that is the recipe for disaster. Because <laughs> we'd all go over there. And because the pastor didn't flow in the Spirit like he should, they, they wanted him to. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best, that's one of the most godly and best men I've ever known. Mm -hmm. That pastor. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to give his name because I'll have timetable me and some people think I'm talking about them, but I am. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We had the prayer chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You come on the cottage prayer meeting and you get in the chair and everybody in the room gathers around and everybody has a word from heaven. Yeah. We all get in the all. Prophesy. Now, how can everybody in that room prophesy? Remember, Paul said, if the, if the prophets speak, let be two or three at the most. The others judge. Right. Amen. And if, if others have something, let them hold it. Right. And I said that to bring me to something else here in just a second. So, I'm not going to be so you know, I didn't know anybody. Right. But it, it didn't take long for that turn to a disaster. Mm -hmm. You had to go get a word, you had to give a word. Right. Let me tell you, you cannot just put people in the middle of a room and you and all gather everybody around them and everybody just give a word. Yes. That's not the Holy Ghost. Yes. You're opening yourself up to the wrong spirit. Yes. Yes. Now we speak in Prophets, 1 Corinthians 14 says we speak unto men uh, uh, for edification, for comfort, and exhortation. And it's, here's the thing. Brother Hagin said you got to be in the spirit. Right. He said, so you got to have the unction to give it. You just don't look at someone and say, well, Go ahead, whatever's in your head, give it to this person. Oh no. I don't want what's in their head. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I don't want what's in their head. I don't want what's in their head. That's right. I want what is the unction of the Spirit 
servants yes. to come because that is anointed. And see, the anointing destroys the yoke and yes. removes the burden. Yes. Not when you're a little cute thought. Who can teach you how to prophesy? Uh -huh. You can't teach people to prophesy no one. You can teach them to work miracles. Amen. Amen. Now, if you can teach them to prophesy, get some folk in there and start having them work miracles. Alright, everybody gather around. We need a miracle. Everybody work the miracle now. It's a gift of the Spirit. Come on now. Hello? Heal them. Now we can get some healings without the unction. I've heard, I've heard healing preachers, you know, particularly Dad Hagen, because that's who we sat under. But I've heard him say, uh, I don't have the anointing. He said, now I can pray for you according to the Word of God, but I don't have the anointing on me. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you what the Word says. Yeah. I'm not going to give you me. Uh -huh. I'm not going to give you the inference that it's the anointing on me of doing it. I'm going to tell you what the Word says. Amen. The Word says that we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Now I'm going to do it according to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And minister that way. Yeah. Now, still the glory goes to God. Still yeah. Jesus gets the honor yes. and the praise and the, and the glory. But you just can't go and do... So why do people do it with prophecy? It's the easiest gift to cheat or to, or to make or mimic. Yeah. It's the easiest gift to mimic. Because all you got to do is go, yay, the Lord says. And then if you listen to what some people say sometimes, the Lord didn't say any of it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Are you here? As I was with Abraham, when he brought the children of it, there's one moment to prophesy, quote, prophesy this in church one day. God understood. As I was with Abraham, when I brought the children of Israel out, as I was with Abraham, when I when I was with them, when we brought them over the Red Sea on dry ground. As I was with Abraham, forty years in the desert and wilderness, and, and you know, a pillar of fire by a uh, night and a cloud by day. So will I be with you. She sat down. She sat there a second. Everybody in the building's looking at her. She came back and said, "Yay! The Lord has made a mistake. It was Moses." Oh, he didn't make a mistake. No. You can't put people in the we, we did that. We did, I've been there. Actually, everybody tries that. And everybody thinks they're spiritual. And you're not. And, and here, here's the problem. When the leaders are behind it, that's the trouble. Because they're not correct. And they say, no, 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 you can't do that now. you got to have an unction. Now, if you've got something from the Holy Ghost, I'm going to judge it because I'm spiritual. I'm the I'm, well, who makes you in charge? God. <laughs> Amen. You with your spirit. You, you know, let the others judge. That's right. Amen. Well, we don't want to hurt. No, wait a second now. I want everybody to, to follow the Holy Ghost. But I want them to follow the Holy Ghost. I don't want them to follow some whim. Mm, Just because yes. you got a goosebump don't mean God's talking. Amen. I got a shiver. <laughs> well, I, I've, I've seen hard movies that got shivers. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. You know what, what? The devils believe in trouble. Mm, right. That's right. Hello? Mm -hmm. So if we're going to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, number one, we got to endeavor to be people who are yielded to and recognize when we're in the Spirit. Yes. Not just because we gather around and somebody says, let's, let's put somebody in the middle of that, that's prophecy. You, you go ahead. Whatever picture comes to your head, whatever word comes up, speak it of them. Mm -hmm. What if they're not in the Spirit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello? We're trying to teach them to be yielded to the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. When it comes to spiritual things, you don't do that. Amen. Amen. You need to you you need to keep getting them around the anointing so they recognize the Holy Spirit. Now, here's here's an example of um, a situation where I had grown to, and I, I'm using me. Listen, I'm old enough now. Been serving God long enough now. Been in the ministry long enough now. I can speak using me. Mm -hmm. right. I'm not some young, young whippersnapper. Mm -hmm. I know I look 25, but I'm not. <laughs> Okay. I've been in the ministry over 30 years now. Mm. All right, so I, I've been around the circle a few times. Yeah. But back in, uh, um, in the in the new, the, the Rainbow Bible Church, the new building there, uh, about 19, oh, I guess about 1993, 1994. Uh, but you know, of course, Dad was teaching the services. Right. Um, he always taught Winter Bible Seminar, and um, uh, we're there. And of course, in that in that time frame, Brother Copeland and all those guys would come. They sit up on the platform in the choir loft. They sit up on the choir loft, and they would sit up there. Because if you don't, then every, everybody on the planet is going to try to attack them while they sit down out in the service. Uh -huh. They just would. I want your autograph. You want to, I want to ask your spiritual question. I want to argue with them about the Bible. So I mean, <laughs> people get crazy. Yeah. They just want to come get ministered to. Right. 
Well, I'm sitting out there probably seven rows looking at the platform on the left on the first section that's at an angle about seven rows back on this inside aisle. And I'm sitting there. And I'm looking up and I see Brother Copeland sitting on the platform. And I am telling you, the word of the Lord came unto me. Oh, yeah. I mean, prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. We see the spirit of the prophet subject to the prophet. Yeah. Yeah. That anointing came on me with the word, but there was missing one thing, the unction to give it. I knew it was God. I knew what he wanted to say to it. I could have stood up and said it, and it would have been exactly what God wanted to say to him. But the unction was missing. The, the inspiration to do that wasn't there. Oh, okay. I knew what God wanted to say, but he didn't inspire me to say it. Well, about five minutes later, Brother Hagin turned around and said, Can I come over here? Stands there, and he begins to speak to him by the Holy Ghost. Almost verbatim. <laughs> What God had given me yes. out there. Yes. But I didn't have the yes. unction. Uh -huh. I knew it was God. And see, what, what was God doing? One thing, he was teaching me that I, had, that I knew his voice. Uh -huh. right. You see? But I was mature enough to understand the order of the service. That wasn't yes. right for me rather than try to get it. Yeah. First thing is, I'd have been tackled by about 15 ushers trying to get there. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'd have never gotten there. I got a word for Kenneth. I got a word for Kenneth. I think he, I mean, I laid out like this, they had me up in the air over the head. I got a word for Kenneth. <laughs> it had never got out. It, it, it just it never got out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so here we have, you got to have the unction. See, and what we were doing back in that college prayer meeting, we used to get together and try to, we would try to get everybody to have, you know, let them be used by God. Well, God wants to use us. But it's got to be with his timing and his unction. Yeah, yeah. You just can't get some picture in your head and speak it over somebody and that be God. Yeah. Then well, what happens is everybody feels spiritual. Oh, God used me. Mm -hmm. Now some bozo sets you up for the devil to come in mm -hmm. and have you go in and start speaking. Well, God uses me this way and start speaking stuff that isn't accurate. That's right. That's right. And start speaking things over people's lives. It's not the Holy Ghost. Because mm -hmm. we didn't teach you. You have to wait for the most important thing of all that, the unction. You just don't speak stuff just because you want to speak stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been in services where I had stuff God wouldn't let me give it. Mm -hmm. right. I knew stuff. Yeah. Right. As a matter of fact, if I give it, it would mess people up. Right. Mm -hmm. I've looked out in the service and went, oh my God. And just say, there's nothing there to give away. I mean, there's not, not an ounce. Mm -hmm. Now God's talked to me. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. Not an a smidget <laughs> of unction. <laughs> and then I had services where God spoke to me and said, and I knew it was God to give it. I've warned people, I've given people warnings by the Spirit of God and they disobeyed, they just didn't do it and they went out and exactly what I told them what happened, happened. Uh -huh. Hello? Well, see what's going on right there? Word of wisdom is operation there. Right. Mm -hmm. But I had an unction to give it. And sometimes God can show you stuff and you just, just so you'll know ahead of time. Right. Yes. Uh-huh. But you're not supposed to get it. So put people in a circle and put somebody in there and everybody just give whatever comes up to them. And everybody thinks that they're being used of God. You're not being used of God. You're being manipulated by man to make you feel spiritual. Because mm -hmm. it, it better, it, 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 it fits their narrative. Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking about my own personal experience. Been there. All the folks eventually left that church. Right. It was in that group. And when they started their own, because they, they didn't believe in the Holy Ghost. They don't believe in the Holy Ghost either, half the time. Right. I've known that. I, I know, I've got two minutes. We had, this is the hour of power, because we have room from seven to eight. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, I, come back next week for part two. <laughs> Actually, two weeks, because I'm not going to be here next week. Hallelujah. I'm going my wife, spring break is here. We're going off to visit family. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. I need you to be on standby. Because I had you ain't gonna be here next week? Where are you going? I don't know where you're going. Probably with you and your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you are gonna be here next week. 
You'll be here. All right. And the, and the reason is, is because I asked Ari, asked Captain Minutes on Tuesday, but they're not going to do Tuesday next week. So I moved him to Wednesday, so I already asked him to do Tuesday. But he doesn't know if he can do it because of school. So if he can't, I need for you to be on standby. No Tuesday. Wednesday. No Tuesday starts next week. No Wednesday. Yeah. I, said, well, I was going to have you do Wednesday and him do Tuesday, but I'd already asked him to do Tuesday before mm. and uh, got, kind of gotten that. Yeah. Okay. They canceled Tuesday because nobody's going to be over there. So, I'm glad to see you now. Stand by. Glory to God. Amen. So, we, we pick up two weeks from here. All right. And where was I going right before I said all that? I don't know, but your time is up. No, I got one minute. Hour of power. It's the hour of power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, oh, ministers. I've known name ministers. I have a good friend who used to work with one. Really good friend. Went to Wrangell with him. We've been buddies ever since. He worked with him. If I told him, you'd know him. So this minister would go out one night. He'd take water and draw it all over the people and everybody get healed. Mm -hmm. Go back out the next night, throw the water on and all they got was wet. Because if it worked last night, it got to work tonight. Punch somebody in the stomach tonight, two will go away. Punch somebody in the stomach this night, and the husband ready to kill you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing happened. Karate chopped them on the neck one night. Everybody get healed. Come back next night, start chopping people. They're back in the chiropractor the next day because they're worse off than they were before they went in. What is this? See, a lot of people who get used in spiritual manifestations don't learn that because it's just, when it's there, it's there. And they don't, like, Brother Hagin said this, build your ministry on the word, not on the yes. gift. Amen. 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 Because when the gift is in manifestation, then you've got the word to fall yes. back on. Amen. And give them the word. Amen. A lot of people, if they don't have the gift of manifestation, they ain't got nothing to give the people. Yeah. Uh -huh. and so they try to fake it. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't fake the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now, some people may not know the difference. You line a bunch of people up, put them in a circle, put somebody in the middle, and people start saying, you know, uh, I see a picture of a petal floating through the air. That, and they always want to try to interpret that. Oh, God's anointing is floating out of heaven to land on you. You start getting all this creep, or the person's left to try to figure out what it means. What does it mean? You know? I mean, I see, you know, I, oh, I see the letters GP in the sky. Go preach. You're supposed to go preach. Oh, that's what that means. That's God telling you to go preach. After a few years, they come back and say, Lord, yeah, I know you called me to go preach because you put GP in the sky and God speaks to him and says, that didn't mean go preach, it meant go plow. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.